Let's get started. So welcome to today's Postgres World Webinar, Hadoop Can't Query, Postgres QL Features. We're joined by Venkatesh Raghavan, Senior Manager, VMware Tanzu Greenplum, who will discuss Platform Extension Flamework, or PXF, an open source project that enables users to query heterogeneous data sources via pre-built connectors. That is a mouthful. Uh, my name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres World Webinar organizers, and I will be your moderator today. A little bit about your speaker. So Venkatesh has been with VMware for nearly four years. Prior to that, he earned his PhD in query processing from Worcester Polytechnic Institute while also working at Greenplum. Welcome. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off. Take it away, Venkatesh. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, so as she said earlier, um, uh, if you have any questions uh, while the chat, while the conference is going on, either um, put it in the chat window or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. I would like to have a little bit of a more interactive session and given it's, it's a, a small cozy group, I think uh, it will not be too rowdy. Um, so let me take it away. <clears throat> Again, I think everyone can see my screen, correct? Sure can. Uh, all right. Uh, so, um, let, uh, so while I was while during my journey of uh, Green Plum, uh, there was an instance where we were all the Hadoop vendors had difficulty in querying because there are some traditional structures and optimization techniques that has been well established in databases that's not available uh, in the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, but Hadoop ecosystem has a rightful place in our data pipeline. It's a data lake. Uh, it has a lot of great features that we don't want to get rid of. We don't want to start fresh again. So how do we manage all of these disparate data systems? And some of them don't do um, the powerful query optimization, query execution that uh, that green uh, that a traditional database can do so that's when our pxf solution came into being so we had pxf which was connecting green plum to all other ecosystems outside and how can you query how can you use the power of query processing and get data from all these disparate sources that's and and also get over the hump of Hadoop query is being too slow because they don't have great join optimization or like we get pushed down on many other such or indexes or many of such things. So that is the premise of the talk. Um, so um, I, this is a Postgres Chrome. So Greenplum is a Postgres based uh, query, uh, query uh, database data warehouse. Um, so we have developed PXF and we are developing PXF with four data wrappers. So we want PXF to also be used at one point in the near future, hopefully next year uh, with Postgres. Um, and because once we get it working with foreign data wrappers with Green Club, I think to do that with Postgres should be straightforward. Right. <clears throat> so the agenda for today is I wanna present to you the use case of PXF uh, and then a product architecture, some features and best practices, what we found and I want to give some little bit of PR of recently released features. And then I want to focus a little bit heavily on the PXF and the foreign data wrappers API of, uh, of, of, of Postgres. All right, so the issue that we have is many of our customers, both open source as well as enterprise customers, they have a lot of data that is on different sources. So they have a usual question is, how can I run all of these analytical queries that have semi-structured, structured data, many different resources, uh, so external sources. And I also have Greenplum data warehouse where I have all of this uh, data that um, that I'm ter petabytes of data that I have, how do I, rather than having individually querying all of these different spaces, can I have a unified view where I submit a query to Greenplum and Greenplum does the job of collecting these data and presenting the results to me? That's a very commonly asked questions. Uh, every data um, uh, DBA ops person in every company and even universities have multiple databases that they have connections for or systems for. Um, so we want to extract value from all of those different places rather than building a new thing and then migrating all of the data to a new system. 
because there's always going to be new systems coming up. So Greenplum uh, has this platform uh, extension framework, PXF, that enables uh, a user to then go gather all of these data. So right now, what we support is we support traditional relational databases like Oracle, MySQL, Hive, uh, SQL Server, all of those the traditional databases. We can, um, we can query files, Parquet files, or RC files on the Hadoop HDFS system on NAS storage, we can query on Google or Azure or any of the cloud storages so that S3. Um, we, can, we can query Minio and other object stores which uh, have S3 APIs that support. And we also support many different file formats, whether it's CSV, Parquet, ORC, Avro, JSON, it doesn't matter. So we have many different file formats that users can store all of this information. Uh, we also have a project of image processing. How do we take images that are stored in say any cloud storage and then use PXF to extract that data and then use machine learning algorithms to then query those data. So we have a project going on of even image files that how can we get all of those image files into the database and query them and do machine learning. So, so clearly we have many different use cases and like anyone can, um, anyone who's in this field can say, hey, how, what are the different areas that I have, I can go and use this powerful tool? The first one is federation. That means you have different sources and you have warm, cold data across different systems and how do I query that? Exploration, there are many data scientists, they want to take a sample of the data, they don't want to get the whole data system, they want to, they want to explore what the data that they have collected, any researcher, any scientist or machine learning uh, data analyst, they don't want to get the whole system, but they want to go on exploration on these different sources, how do they do that, rather than like, you know, building their own data warehouse or database. So this gives you an opportunity to do that. So another one is data migration, uh, of course. Uh, there are some, once the explorer, or once the data scientist figures out, oh, this is a sample, then I can bring all of that data into the data warehouse. So you can migrate the data from external sources. Say, for example, you're migrating from one uh, product to another product, how do you bring it up? So you can you can say, hey, if you're, if you're going off, say, for a simple example. So your Postgres instance has reached its capacity in regards to it has like 100 terabytes of data. It's very slow. You want to move to Greenplug, which is also Postgres uh, compatible. It's based on a Postgres. So you want to migrate. How do I migrate it? So you can bring all of the Postgres data into Greenplug. And both Postgres and Greenplug are open source. So like you know, a researcher could just uh, have a Greenplug instance and then migrate the Postgres data into Greenplug. So data federation, data exploration, and data migration, those are the three main use cases that PXF tries to uh, address. <clears throat> um, and PXF provides multiple native connectors that connects to this, uh, these different sources. We have connected JDBC connectors that connect to traditional data warehouse. Uh, we have Hadoop connectors, um, cloud storage connectors, Hive connectors, HP connectors. Each of those connectors have specialized connection because each of those connections need different parameters or, or different settings. And how do they perform? How do they? What are the values that they need? And how, what are the features that they support based on that? These are native connectors that connect to these different sources. Uh, JDPC is the default in the sense like in any new data, anyone who supports a JDPC uh, uh, connection can, even if we don't have a specialized connection for them, they can use the JDPC connector. So uh, GreenPub supports polymorphic storage. What does that mean is you can have heap tables, AO tables, you can have partition and vertical partitioning, horizontal partitioning. Then on top of that, from an external disparate source perspective, you can have warm data in Greenplum, very hot data, say for example, like instant, like ticket booking some, or some something that's really hot, um, like some ticketing system. You can have it in Gemfire, you could have it in MySQL, something that is very quick, very fast, transactional database. You can have that, all the hot data in MySQL. You can have the warm data that is like, you know, say 2010, past 10 years of 
um, sales, you can have it in green plum, and then you have you can have archival data. You know, you don't want to, you don't frequently access those data. Might as well put them in cold storage. Uh, cold storage is only when you need it, you can pull it up. So you can put it in any cloud storage. You can put it in a Hadoop data lake. You can put it in any data lake. Uh, somewhere where it is, uh, rather than using the resources of Greenplum, you can put it in an archival format. Uh, you can have it more compressed. You can do many different things. So Greenplum provides you not only polymorphic storage, in regards to how data is stored inside the database, but it also it's 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 like how where you store it. So Greenpalm enables you to do that. Uh, but from a customer perspective, if they some if they do say aggregate query, a count star query or something, they uh, submit the query to Greenplum, and Greenplum knows that hey, I am going to be doing this 2019, the latest from 2019 to 2022. So then I'm going that is hot data that I have to go and fetch it from. Uh, my SQL for this instance, but from a query perspective, all of those things are like you know, like the user just interacts with uh, Greenplum, and Greenplum does the job of aggregating all of the data, pushing predicates, pushing, doing column projection, doing all of those things. So this polymorphic storage across disparate sources, the Greenplum user can have a seamless integration with all of these different data sources. So uh, Greenplum has a native um, API called the External Table Framework. Um, so it's basically an extension. Uh, you create a table. Uh, so what do we try to do? So we have, the first thing is you have the location. Where is it located? Uh, so where is it located? It's, you have sales 2032. So that's where it's located. Then you have, oh, I have a profile. It's a HDFS parquet file. So that is the connector and format that I'm trying to um, get. And then the server, like you know, here I have an example called Data Lake. So it's like a server that you know you connect outside to, uh, 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 to the outside server. You connect to where um, the where the location, the password, all of those things. So you have a config file that will tell you which is what is the server defined as. Uh, what are the say, for example, if you have a key tab, if you have Kerberos or something, what is how do you what is the Kerberos uh, um, properties that you need to provide so that you can have authentication. And then you have the custom format. That means you, each one you can have it. You can have your own formatter. How the data is written, you can. You can you can specify the format, uh, the formatter that uh, reads that external data. So the external table API, uh, we are for the latest Green Plum, which is Green Plum Seven, where we are beating end of this year, early next year. So that one will be we are slowly migrating to the foreign data wrappers. <clears throat> so what is this architecture? What is the pxf So as you know, Green Plum is a uh, uh, distributed shared nothing architecture. So I'm just giving an example where you have a green plum instance with two segment hosts, and each segment has three segments each. Okay, um, so each segment could be considered or uh, the uh, understood as a Postgres instance, for example. So each uh, the query, whenever a query comes into the master, the master plans out the query and sends a copy of that plan to each of the segments. So segment one, segment two, segment three, segment four, segment five, segment six, all of them will get a, a copy of the plan. And within that, they will say, hey, I have to read, say for example, if the data was um, not in an external source and was in an internal source, each of that segment will have a portion of the data. Um, so say, for example, segment one will have all California data, segment two will have Massachusetts data, segment three will have Wisconsin data, and so on and so forth. And if you have a query that says, hey, give me all of the average sales of all of the, customer, all of the sales that we've had per a group by state so each segment will then go and do an aggregation on in, in parallel and then give the aggregation back to the green plum coordinator node which is called the green plum master now if you had an external source then each of these segments will start a pxf thread so green plum uh, pxf 6.0 comes with the uh, uh, spring boot uh, microservice with tomcat so it will create a thread or PXF server, which will then go and get the data and format it so that it will fit with the Green Plum 
format um, and then give it to the segment. So it'll do all of the column projection. It'll push the, it'll, it'll take the query and see what are the predicates that I can push down and then push it down and then see what are the columns that are needed so that column projection happens and all of those things. So, so this, the PXF threads that are there on each of the triggered by each of the segment are run in parallel. Uh, and, and, and then the workload is split and then you can get large amount of data inside Greenplum. We are currently working on a more expansionist PXF model where uh, say for example, if you have more fragments that you need, you can you can start up another PXF segment host that just consumes data and process it rather than tied very coupled with green plum. So PXF in principle, we have tested it where PXF can remain in a different segment host, not necessarily in the host that is the green plum segment is. Um, this way, some you know Java has a lot of memory. Like we have to be very careful with memory utilization. So this enables PXF to run on a separate host, have its own dedicated like uh, system that you can consume as much memory as you want, and the segments don't get affected by the large amount of data that's being ingested inside Gradle. Any questions so far? Yeah, if not. No questions yep. as of yet, but this is a great reminder to get your questions in the chat. Thank you so much. All right, cool. Uh, so moving forward. So, so the first thing, I, so I'm going to touch upon a few things um, on PXF, what it provides and then and features, and then we can go into um, what is the PXF roadmap with Postgres uh, uh, for data wrappers API. Uh, the first one is predicate pushdown. So whenever you have a query, so it's state equal to California, we take that predicate, the planner, the green plum planner uh, optimizer will say, hey, I have this predicate. I know you're an external table scan. Here is that predicate. Can you help me push this? And the PXS ser ser uh, server will take that information and then push that predicate di directly down to the external system. Say, for example, if it was JDBC, it will augment the query that it sends to uh, the external system with saying, hey, I want also to filter this predicates. All right. Um, so if you are having a hive tables or many of the external systems that partition the partition uh, data set, um, then you can say, for example, in Hadoop or Hive that it's partitioned by state and you have California. So Greenplum, uh, the PXF server will just go and ask Hadoop to then say, hey, just don't touch all of the files, just touch the files which has California information. So this predicate pushdown is very useful in regards to reducing the number of uh, predicates that uh, number of tuples that are consumed by the uh, by the by the green pump system alternate otherwise we have to get all of the petabytes of information into the pxf which will just not be efficient and it will probably disturb uh, other workloads that are going on in the concurrency and PX push to joins. Very great question. Um, PXF currently does not push aggregates and joins. That's what we're working on with the FDW um, uh, work that we are doing. We want to push down aggregates and we want to push down joins. It's a great question. All right. Um, so the next one is to say, for example, if you have, so this is the partition pruning. So if you have external data sets, which have partitions, of data, we will not touch those things. So, so that is another one, right? Then you have column projection. This is again trivial, not brain surgery here. Um, so if you have only certain columns that you need, PXF will not bring all of the tuples. It will just bring those columns that are needed. Of course, it depends on the data type and what the external system supports. Um, so based on that, we will only pull in all the columns that are needed. And especially if you have column-oriented storage, this is the one that works best with us. So at one point, I don't have one of the slides, um, so but I will talk about it. This is the right time. So we have something called named query. So let me just scribble a little bit here. Uh, so say, for example, you have an external table, the external source that has two tables. One is, say, uh, TPCH, line item, 
uh, like line item and orders, right? You have the two tables that are stored in the external data source. And you have a subquery inside your mega query that joins these two tables that are in the external source, right? Um, this is going back to the question uh, one of our um, attendees asked, can we do join pushing? Uh, we currently don't have native join pushing, but what we do support is called the named queries, right? So say, for example, if you have the simple join, you can create a named query called as joining line item. And uh, I think my this one crashed. Can everyone see my screen? I can. It says okay. user impersonation. Sorry, thank you. All right, uh, let's clear this out. I always remember that annotating while doing presentation sometimes causes problems. All right, column projection. So, so say for example, you have the line item and orders, right? And you have this both an external table. I could create what is called as a named query. So what is a name query? You can view it as a, you can see it as a view. So you have a view, you create a view saying line item, order, join command. And you, you store it as a view inside Greenplum. It's called as a name query, name query.sql. And then you create an external table based out of that name query. So then what you do, if, if you have additional predicates that you're on top of the view, Green Plum will view this whole, so will see this materialized view, uh, so non materialized, just a logical view as one external table, and then push the whole query into the external system. That is the, it's, I would say it's a workaround for not being able to push aggregates and joins down right now. So I don't know whether that answers one of the questions from uh, Slava. So the, the name query features enables enables one to push these kind of complex queries into the external system, but this has to be user initiated. Initiated. It's not initiated by the system as a whole. So if you, it, it takes a little bit of engineering um, effort, um, but that, that is allowed. <clears throat> so let's look at the JDBC uh, um, connector. The JDBC connector, if you have a traditional JDBC connector, you're connecting to MySQL and you just say, hey, get MySQL. It currently only one segment will go and fetch all of the rows back. Rather, you want to not do that. You want to have have parallelism with Greenplum. Then you have to say to the external, when creating the external uh, table, saying, hey, I'm going to partition by a range. And this is all of these intervals. And then what happens is each of the intervals, one of the segment server will take it up and rewrite the query. Say, for example, if it selects star, the external table is just orders, it will say select star from orders, get me this month, then get me this month. Each of the segments will take one portion. Basically, it will rewrite the query into a smaller query and then submit it to the external system. So it's much faster. We have performance numbers. I think one of our blogs uh, talks about the performance numbers of how much faster, I think two or three X faster um, that we can get uh, by doing that. So the next one, which I wanted to talk about is impersonation. So, all right. So in a traditional system, and you don't have any form of information in, in, in impersonation. So Al, there are two users of Greenplum, which is Alice and Scott, and they submit a query. They have data in some, Alice has some data, Scott has some data. They are say, for example, competing, um, what is it? They're doing their own research, competing research on some sensitive information that they don't have privilege of seeing each other's data. But if you are going to write this into an external system or, uh, or access your, uh, Alice wants to access her own data that is in her Hadoop data lake that she has privilege, privilege for, that is not possible without information in, in impersonation. What it means is when PXF goes to write or read data, it goes through based out of the GP admin, which is the 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 path the uh, um, the user role that PXF server is installed on. 
uh, and then it goes in as GP admin and for GP admin to access any of the external data, it has to have access to all data. But if Alice and Scott cannot access each other's data, this is a problem. So what you need to do that is to have an impersonation which says Alice can Alice's persona in the HDFS system is X and Scott's persona in uh, in HDFS system is Y. And I have mapped my user of Green Plum Alice to X and Scott to Y. And then PXF server says, okay, now I know Alice on this system, on this server is X. So I'm going to give that privilege to the HDFS system so that I can access those privilege information because Alice has those privileges. And Scott has access to a different set of data. So this is a user impersonation which enables Green Plum to maintain the uh, data uh, protection for the external system so that people don't have access to everything when they don't have the privilege to access everything. Um, but if you want to take it up a notch and say, hey, I have this Kerberos or LDAP authentication server, then I have, this is my keys and key tabs, then I can have a more secure way of uh, asking those same queries to that external system. So Greenplum PXF supports that. So you have an extra level of uh, strong and secure authentication that Greenplum will support with PXF. Any questions so far? Nothing new. Okay. All right. So in this ecosystem, what is it that their best, what are the best practices, which which I want to like really point out? Like when we have data across different sources, we need to use the right tools for the right workload. So PXF is great for certain use cases. There are other things like GPSS, say for example, Kafka, it's going to go open source at some point in the future. Um, so different tools are needed for different things. And make sure that if you have hive tables, uh, if you can partition it, you can use different um, options that Green Plum external table API and PXL provides that will speed up your access to different things. If you know that you have material, if you can have joins, you have joining some tables in the external table, create a named query so that you can push it to the external system. Use column projection and predicate pushdown wherever possible. If you are using S3, you prefer S3 select if you can bear the additional cost. The connection pooling for JDBC connector is very important to tune. Um, and base, figure out which is the right profile connector that you need so that you can do the different predicate pushdown or column projection. And as usual, as long as you're working in a Java environment, you have to make sure that the, the JVM settings are correct so that you the number of the load or the volume or the concurrency that you have, you have to give enough memory for the JVM. <clears throat> the new features that we are coming up, and very excited about this, is, hey, we are having now constraint delegation with Kerberos. We have enhanced features of now Avro logical data types. We are supporting ORC uh, writes, um, uh, reading JSON arrays. Um, now we are working on so uh, allowing connection timeouts so that you know so if the data is too large and we don't want to hang the system. Um, and we are also doing reading of ORC. We now or PXF produces metrics in Prometheus, then which you can then graph or monitor um, uh, on uh, on an external uh, system. There's a question. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so this is the part of Green Plum and foreign data wrappers. So currently, PXF, as I mentioned, Green Plum six comes with PXF and it supports external table API. We are shifting towards uh, Green Pub 7 is shifting towards foreign data wrappers. Uh, I don't know whether, uh, just for public information, Green Pub 7 is based out of Postgres 12. Um, we are planning to beta it by end of this year, early next year by January, um, and then GA uh, sometime mid next year. Um, uh, so, what does this Foreign data wrappers API helps us. A, it allows us to do better predicate pushdown, aggregate pushdown, join pushdown. We're working on that. We can now do statistics on foreign data table, uh, tables. Currently, as it stands in external table API, as well as 
uh, our statistics in Greenplum, we only have a constant number. Like you, you could have a data lake with a petabyte of data, but the optimizer inside Greenplum thinks it is, hey, it is just thousand rows because it's a constant in one of the header files uh, because we have no idea of the number of distinct values number of rows any of these information if you have another postgres instance that you're trying to query and you have histograms you could easily take that histograms and put it inside greenplum but we currently don't do that so all of the foreign data wrapper api will enable us to get the statistics on these external table uh, we have, there are many open source committers on the Postgres hooks into a Postgres planner through FTW. We can avail that uh, and also validation options. Uh, and this will also enables the more, uh, a wider use of PXF in the Postgres community. Um, so we want to do, uh, as a future step, we are currently focusing on the first set, which I talked about the future. What we want to do is PXF for Postgres and PXF for join and aggregate pushdown. Uh, so just a little bit of overview, what does our implementation of the foreign data wrappers provide to the community? So the we have uh, eight or more set of foreign data wrapper APIs like JDBC, foreign data wrapper, HDFS, foreign data wrapper, all of those things. And each of these wrappers are associated with one or many servers. Um, so you can have multiple Oracle servers and like, you know, you can have each of them going through this JDBC uh, foreign data wrapper. Then you have customer mappings where you can say, what is this for this server, HDF, this Aiden um, ha is through the HDFS server, the server X, and then their username in that HDFS server is Aiden on HDFS, for example. Um, and then you can create the foreign data tables where you can say, this is the path, this is the format, this is where I want to error limit. Right. So, right. So, so let's look at what the mapping of this external table API with what we are, we have, we have done for foreign data wrappers, right? Both we have to create an extension VXF in external table API, but here we do extension FTW. Then what we have is instead of the profile, we have, um, we have this S3. This is my foreign data wrapper S3. So what used to be this profile S3 becomes a server uh, foreign data wrapper S3 PXF FTW. Right. Um, then we have we create during um, when we define the user mapping, we say, hey, the, my user mapping is S3, my S3, and in all of the um, configuration file, all of those information of login, password, all of those things, where the service located, all of those things will go in. Then you have foreign data wrap, foreign table, where you have different options that you provide. Um, uh, for instance, you say, where's the resources? Uh, what is the format? And what is the, air, uh, like, what is the, before we had to do both the S3 CSV as well as format is kind of confusing. Now it is, it's a little bit cleaner, it's only one place. Uh, then we have went after, um, like, you know, if you, if you, uh, if, what do you do when you hit the error limit or how many rows do you fetch at a time? Uh, those are some things that you can put in. Um, in the external table API uh, that we currently have in GPDB6, Greenplum 6, uh, if you have to change something, you can't do an alter table. That means you have to drop the table and then redo it. It's the pain. Um, so with the F4 data wrappers, it'll be easier because we can always alter table and not drop it. And another wonderful thing is currently the external table API has a separate format for writing and separate form of reading, but the FDW framework will just have the same table for reading and writing. So every table is a read and write. Um, so that is also very good. So what are the completed tasks so far? Um, we, ha uh, we have finished the reading, we have done the validation, we have done performance testing for reading, we have done finished writing through master. We are working on parallel writes where each of the segment goes and writes in parallel. 
um, and also moving all of the testing framework, the end-to-end -end testing framework from the external table API to foreign data wrappers. As you know, both PXF and GreenPlum are open source. Um, so if you are interested in looking at our progress, in a, please reach out to uh, me or Lindsay and we can give you access to our work in progress branch. <clears throat> what is the uh, looking forward? What is it that we are looking at? So one thing we are looking at is high availability. So anything, any for any reason, any of the PXF servers goes down, how do we reboot it? Um, integrate with data lake solutions, like say, for example, uh, data, uh, data bricks, uh, Delta Lake. Um, um, managing, if you have a data warehouse or database and you want to monitor and you want to restrict, you want to do some form of workload balancing, how much resources they can use, how many memory, how much CPU, how many, how many, how much amount of data can they bring into the system? You need to have some form of workload management. So we are working on integrating GreenPlum with resource groups or C groups so that we can have these kinds of um, privileges where different kinds of users can have different resource uh, allocations to them, uh, right? Um, so we are also looking for flexible data and column mapping. We're also looking at, this is a pet project, I don't know how, 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 uh, how realistic it is that many times customer wants to do a discovery based mapping, saying, I have this table, can you just go discover what the thing is and then map it to the appropriate uh, columns for green plum rather than me specifying one to one all of these mappings um then we have hive three uh, we manage tables we currently uh, all do uh, uh, we don't do a great job supporting hive three managed tables uh, so we want to make sure that any asset transactional tables that are there on Hive 3, we can support. Uh, so those are the main roadmaps that uh, we are looking at. Uh, uh, the GitHub is right there. There's also Green Club DB, GPDB, which is that's also a Green Club, and also our open source Slack. So these are some basic informations on PXF and our roadmap. I'm looking forward to any of your questions. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so, so much. Um, reminder to everyone to get their questions in now. Um, we'll kick off with the question that we do have, which is when configuring FDW, where do you store users slash password data? Can it be pulled from single sign-on providers like OKTA? That's a great question. We are working on, so currently, uh, the GP admin has access and they are encrypted. Um, so basically, let me share my screen. Uh, uh, we are where our um, Green Pump instance has folders for servers where the login passwords are on XML files, which are encrypted. But we are looking at the single sign on uh, aspect of it. Wonderful. Oh, and the graph database, George had, George Ciprilin had asked, can PXF support graph database? We haven't tried that, but we have had multiple requests for graph database. So let me get back to you. That's a very good question. Yeah. You were on it before I even read it. Amazing. Um, so then let's uh, bring it home. Um, thank you so much to all of our attendees for spending a little bit of their day with us. Thank you, uh, Venkatesh. This was wonderful, clearly a very thought out presentation. Um, and I can say that I personally learned something. Um, we hope to see all of you on future Postgres world webinars, and I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening. Thanks so much, y'all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.